Big week this week and next week in the stock market. Guys, this is like the Super Bowl for us. This is a lot of companies here that are reporting. And this is why you need to subscribe to our channel. We love making reaction videos about quarterly results. Now remember, we want to use this as a teaching guide. And this is why you especially need to subscribe. We look at these as a small blip in time. Not every company can beat every single quarter, but it's a good way to see what they're saying, how they're saying it. Some of the major companies are reporting tomorrow, Tesla. Guys, Tesla's down big. Since today fell below 140, all-time high of 414 almost three years ago, and it's gone nowhere. In fact, it's fallen over 60, maybe even 70% since then. If you were a Tesla bull at 414, the revenue is almost double, profits up, why are you not a Tesla bull now? Remember, news follows the stock price. All the more reason you'll want to check in and see our Tesla report. UPS, where are shipments going? Everybody's worried, are we in a recession? Are we not? There'll be a lot of guidance on shipping from UPS here. Another big one, Ford, Chipotle, Intel, Google, Microsoft. Guys, I need to see anything else. These are huge companies here that are going to sit there and say, okay, what are sales doing right now? Remember, EV was the hype three, four years ago. Now every car manufacturer is talking negatively. We're pulling back our EV spend. We're pulling back our EV development. It's kind of a lot different the last few years, but something we talked about, nothing can stay hyped forever. Look at artificial intelligence and AI. That's the hype right now. Guys, that will pass eventually. Do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel if you want to hear market reaction news. We did five videos last week. We do four to five on this channel. We love talking about what's going to happen in the market. And don't forget, next week, Fed rate decision. I think it's on the 1st of May. Guys, you got to remember, four months ago, people were talking about six or seven rate cuts this year. Now, there's an 11% chance that we don't even have a rate cut this year based on the way people are betting right now. We're going from six or seven for the year to not even having one as being an 11% chance. Guys, we talk about all the time. We have no idea what's going to happen in the future. I have no idea what's going to happen here. Everybody's focused on this Tesla report. What's going to happen here? Guys, if they report bad, where's the bottom of this thing? I don't know. I can't imagine it's going to be a good response in the market if revenue and profit go down. Because remember, just today, they announced another cut in prices. We talked about it way before, and I want to use this as a learning experience for people. Three years ago, I was criticized heavily for being more cautious on Tesla. Remember, Mo owns a Tesla. I owned a Tesla. Pretty much everybody in, this, in, in our company owned a Tesla. But guess what? We sat there and said, but are you paying too much for a good thing? That was our thesis. Since then, the stock is down. Now, keep in mind, I was negative on the valuation well before Two, three years ago. So I was wrong for a big chunk of time. And even today at $140 a share, I was wrong before that. I said it wasn't worth that. But now you sit here and you see all these price cuts. Guys, to become the number one car manufacturer in the world, what does it have to do? It has to sell a lot of cars, but you can't sell them at $100,000 each in today's prices. You have to sell them at a much lower price. And that is the issue with Tesla growing. Now, is there a potential software component? Absolutely. We'll get into that tomorrow after we do our Tesla reaction video because that's going to be such an important video. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and make sure you check in so you can see what we say about Tesla. Guys, two more companies I'm watching from a personal perspective. Meta, because I love this company. I bought it on the absolute low of $88 a share on November 4th, 2022. And then I was an idiot and sold at $195, not because of valuation, because of momentum. Big mistake Guys, Southwest Airlines. Now this one, I tell you guys all the time, I don't really care about quarterly reactions. I do care about this one because Southwest has been hit with the whole Boeing issue, 737 issue, and their margins have been a lot lower because of costs they've taken in the last year. I will be interested to see how they report. They have record earnings, but profit is down like 70% in terms of profit margin. This one will matter to me to see what are they guiding for the future. I still love the company at this price. Doesn't mean you should go buy it. I do own it. Please don't buy it because anybody on the internet does, but it's something to consider. And guys, as we all know, let's take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA is crazy. NVIDIA went down 10% on Friday. It's rebounding a little bit here, but to fall this much, it's all time high was 974 just, just a little over five weeks ago. $974. Now, Where's it going to go from here? 
here's where it's going to go here. I don't have a fucking clue. And anyone who says they do is lying to you and stay the F away from them. Guys, we have no idea where this is going. This could go to all-time highs. This could go a lot lower. It was at $100 a share just in the last year and a half. We have no idea where it's going. Is NVIDIA an incredible company with growing margins and selling a ton of chips? Yeah, of course they are because they were the most prepared. But guess what happens when you have high margins in a business that a lot of big competitors are in? Just like cloud computing, everybody's going to sit there and crowd to it. So NVIDIA will probably see some more competition in the future. What will that do to NVIDIA's profit margin? Well, they can still generate more revenue and profit from that, but their profit margin might decrease. Okay, it could still be a better company even with more competition around it. And that's part of the issue I want everybody to understand. You have to think about this like thinking like a business. Just like the Tesla example, I always said to people, think like a, a business person. If you want to be the number one car manufacturer in the world, how would you do it? Well, make a ton of cars that everybody likes. Can you make a ton of cars that everybody likes at $100,000 each? No. That's why I always said, guys, these assumptions that the Tesla bulls are making are just unreasonable. You can't sell 15 million cars at $100,000 each in today's dollars. It is not possible. It's not possible. So what do you have to do? You have to, if you're going to sell the number one, be the number one car manufacturer in the world, you need to sell a car that a lot of people can buy. And that's a $30,000, $45,000 car on the high side. That's how you do it. And don't forget, BYD in China has the number three or four car and like three, four of the top 10 electric vehicles in the world. People are sleeping on them. Yes, they're in China, but if they're a big manufacturer, can they expand abroad? What's that doing to Tesla sales in China? China's a big market, a very big market for Tesla. You've got to think about those things. And the better the investor you are, the better business person you'll be. And the better business person you are, the better investor you'll be. And it's all about, especially with Tesla, it's all about understanding what happens when you buy a company that does this over a two and a half year period of time. From a high of 414 down to, it got as low as 103 or something here and is in a downward trend here. I mean, look at this for you chart guys out there. That's a downward trend with revenue and profit being higher than it is than it was back here. It's a little confusing, but we've talked about that before with Intel, Cisco, my, a lot of companies back in 2000 that have several times more revenue and profit, and yet their stocks still have not beaten 2000 highs. If you overpay for a good thing, you will not do well financially. That's just a reality. If you understand that concept, you're going to do very well as an investor. But the most important part is having that emotion. And I, maybe Tesla's a bad example because of the fact that it was so overpriced here. But let's say hypothetically Tesla was worth it all day here. As it goes low, and for those people who love Tesla at 414, I have one question for you, one question only. If you're an investor, why aren't you unloading everything into Tesla right now? I'm not telling you to do that, but it's just a logical question. The fundamentals are better and the stock is 60, 70% lower. Why would you not spend more money buying more Tesla? Well, that's the question to ask. Remember, news follows the stock price. Since here, what's been the news about Tesla? Elon's a psychopath. He bought Twitter. He's distracted. Guys, he was distracted here too. Yeah, he didn't have Twitter back then, I don't think, but he had all his space company, his, his boring company, his flame, all these things he was doing. He was just as distracted here as here, basically. So I'm, I'm wondering to myself, what's the difference the difference is the stock is down a lot and that's what makes investing hard. That's what makes it feel like you're lonely when you see the stock fall like this and go, what is going on? And guys, we have people in our community who love Tesla. I'll be the first to admit, I can't value the software component of Tesla. It's very difficult for me to sit there and say, what's the possibility for that? For me, I'm going to value Tesla as a car company for the foreseeable future until I start to see some sort of way in which the software component becomes a viable option. Once that happens, I will absolutely include that in my option. But just like if I go to the top high schools in the country and pick their best athletes and say, I cannot call them a pro athlete until they actually become a pro athlete. They could get drafted even. Sorry, you're not a pro athlete until you hit the, you actually play in the pro game. That's the way I look at Tesla. I will value them 
and the component of their company is a software business. And even then, guys, for those who say it's a software company, even if 50% of its revenue comes from software, it's just as much a software business as a car manufacturer. You have to, you have to value them separately and then put them together. That's how you value Tesla. And I just encourage everyone who finds that, hears that, and goes, that makes sense, subscribe to us. But most importantly, guys, it is this emotion of sitting here and being able to handle all of this and being able to say, I believe in this company still. A company that a lot of people are buying lately is Alibaba, a lot of big value investors. But guess what? A lot of value investors are buying it in the 200s, and now it's at 70 bucks. So they truly believe what they believe about the company. They buy more shares. I'm an owner of Baba. I bought it from the mid 100s down. I was lucky and got out of certain. The point is, I'm sitting here at a loss of my Baba. Okay, I still believe in the company. And I believe in it more and more as the price goes down, as long as the fundamentals and the story is the same. But don't distract the story from where the stock price is going. And that's so hard to do. And that's why if you want to be able to handle the emotions, because the emotions are the most important part about investing, click the link below. Check out our community. It's $7 for seven days. We're going to have a wait list coming soon. So make sure you do it now before the wait list starts because we're going to limit the number of people who can join every single day. So I highly encourage you. We had our number one sales week last week. So please go jump on it before we enact this. It's $7 for seven days. It'll change the way in which you view money. The talk of the Fed. I want to get back into that. I love higher interest rates. I think great investors do better when times are tough. I don't think that I know that. And to me, low interest rates gave a lot of crappy investors a low threshold to hit. I truly believe that interest rates are where they should be. Could they go higher or lower from here? I have no idea where they're going to go. And again, no one has a clue. All I know is my personal bias is higher interest rates makes it harder for crappy investors and crappy business people to make money. It weeds bad things out. I was listening to a book, The Obstacle is the Way, by Ryan Holiday. Great book. And I posted this on Twitter the other day. He said, and I didn't verify this fact, he said that half of the Fortune 500 companies out there were created during a bear market or a recession. Why? Well, first off, you got rid of a lot of crappy companies during that bear market and recession. But the other thing is, people are forced to be innovative when they don't have job opportunities. They're forced to start companies. It's an incredible way to be because when things are harder, truly talented investors and business people do the best. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be the person who says, I love bad times because that's the way I am. I love it when times are bad. It makes it easier to find good deals for the astute investor. When everything's going great, everybody's throwing money at things and it can just keep riding the wave. So for those of you who do worry about where interest rates are, guys, start to change your mindset. And it'll take some time. But the more and more you get active in the community, the more and more you watch our channel, the more and more ingrained that'll be in you. I listen to the same things. I read the same things over and over again. Why? It's part of my own self-brainwashing. I want to remember that during bad times, perceived bad times, that's the opportunity for those who want to be aggressive. I was just with my stepson in Texas this weekend. And we were talking. And we were talking about sales and things like that. And I said to him, He's, talking, he's finishing college up and we talked about sales job. And I said to him, the great thing about sales is you'll never find a good salesperson out of a job. I don't care how bad the economy is. If you're a good salesperson, you will always have a job. In fact, the worse the economy is, the better salesperson you are will make you stand out even more. If it's easy to sell to everybody, then crappy sales. Like an example I always give is I had friends who worked the calves back in the mid to late 2000s. And they were always cocky. Oh, we sell a ton. I'm like, well, you guys have LeBron. They'd get pissed. Don't say that. We'd sell like crazy. The second LeBron left, that entire sales department turned over. Oh, all of a sudden, it's not so easy to sell when you have LeBron, is it? It's easy to be cocky when things are going well. Who can be a good salesperson when things are tough? Who can be a great investor when interest rates are high? Who can be a great business person when the economy is failing? fundamentally sound investors and business people will do best then. Guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the link below to join the community. It's $7 for seven days. Thank you for your time.